adjust to it, kind of get them into the routine of a game week where we'll go uh, full pads on Tuesday and we'll go shells on Wednesday and go shorts on Thursday, uh, normally travel on Friday, where in this case we'll have the opportunity to scrimmage on Friday. So trying to get them into the pre-game routine of what we do during the course of the week. But really when you look at it, we're probably only putting shoulder pads on two at the most three more times, and that's Friday, uh, Tuesday, and possibly Wednesday if I put them in shorts. But coming out of camp, I mean in pads, but I'll probably put them in shorts coming out of camp. So we don't have much time left. Uh, we have a lot of mental work to do. Uh, I think they're coming out here. I think they're tired. I think we're we're out of camp, but we're not yet into the season. I think at this point it's almost like, all right, let's 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 get the excitement of playing a game. When we're tired of hitting each other, probably a little more pushing and shoving going on. I think they're they're tired of playing each other and they're ready to line up and play a game. But I think I think their attitude is good. They're focused in what they're trying to do. We're still not where we need to be. I think defensively we have a chance to be a pretty decent football team. Um, but offensively, yeah, we still don't do a lot of the little things the right way. And we talked about how I think the offense is kind of caught up up front, but we're still not executing in the passing game the way we need to be able to execute to be a really good football team at this point. And you also have to look at it and say, well, you've got you know, Landy's a converted quarterback. You've got Lindsey Lamar's a converted running back. You've got Joel Miller's a converted running back. You know, you look at all these guys that you're playing with right now, and they're guys that have converted to their positions to try and give us a little bit of depth there. So they're all not only freshmen from a mental standpoint, picking up everything we're putting in offensively, but they're freshmen at playing the position because they've never played the position before. So we're just going to have to continue to push and, and make sure that we can turn and develop as much as we can. But I think this last week in shorts is going to be really big for our passing game to where we can throw and catch the ball on a consistent basis, at least on air. <laughs> You've explored a lot of options there. I mean, you're you're kind of down to these guys are going to have to do it, are they? Without a doubt. Um, there, there is no, at this point, there is no other, let's move guys around. I mean, you know, we moved Daniel Bryant probably a week ago, I guess it was about at this point. We moved Daniel Bryant, and uh, Daniel Bryant turned his ankle today, you know, which is a shame. He gave us a little bit of fire uh, out there at the Z position and, was, and brought a little bit of excitement and energy and speed and athleticism. And so it's kind of hoping that he could come along. But now with Emmert and his ankle, the, the ones that are there are the ones we have to play with at this point. We don't have any other options. There's no more uh, moving to do. We're putting a guy in another position. We just got to get as good as we can get between now and, and next Saturday. You see the guys start to see Stony Brook, you know, on the horizon now? Um, we're watching some Stony Brook film, and we're, we're out here and we're running some scout teams last week or yesterday and today, a little bit more scout teams and some of the Stony Brook looks that we're going to get. But we're still getting a lot of good work against each other. We're still, still doing a lot of teamwork against each other where we need to go speed on speed. So we haven't, we've kind of sprinkled it, but we haven't dove into it completely as Stony Brook week, but we have gotten a pretty good jump on it this week. The depth chart that y'all released today, is that going to hold true for the Stony Brook game or is there going to be another one before the game? Um, right now, that'll, that'll hold pretty true. I mean, we'll just have to see how it goes in practice. And if somebody, you know, every day we're evaluating them out here. But we, we, the guys that we're working with, and there's some slashes and some tight races that maybe could flip, but pretty much the guys that are on that depth chart are the guys that are going to be playing. I mean, it didn't necessarily, just like it, I've been talking about, I mean, there's some positions where we're deep, where we're going to play everybody. So necessarily who starts is not as big of an issue right now as much as the number of people that are going to play. You uh, got Joseph back out there today. He looked okay? Yep. Yeah, he was He was fine. I mean, he had, yeah, you're always you're always careful with a concussion because they can be so dangerous. And so uh, you're always going to err on the side of protection. And so we, we held him. They felt like maybe he had a chance to go yesterday. But, you know what, let's be on the safe side and hold him one more day. And it's been great for Didi Lattimore, a freshman who's getting all that work, you know. And so all of a sudden, Didi gets that work. And when he comes back, we're that much better and that much deeper at that position. So you know, he should be fine, was back out there running around doing everything today and should be good. But we just got to continue to develop the depth on this team. That's what I, I worry about. I worry about the receiver. As I've talked about all along, but I worry about the depth on this team, and that's what we've got to keep developing. The one's got to become better, the two's got to become ones, and the three's got to become twos, and that's that's the push that we have every day in trying to get better. So you're never there. This is the struggle all year long because you never know when one of those injuries is going to show up. But uh, he should be good. Sabbath should be good. Let's do one more for Coach. You, uh, you've talked a lot about the kickers back and forth. Mm -hmm. Considering what happened in your last game at East Carolina, I mean, is that comforting in some way? You have two guys who you feel pretty good about it. It'll be comforting when the ball goes through the uprights. <laughs> That's when it'll be comforting. Um, no, and, and we do have two guys that are kicking pretty well, and it's gone back and forth. I mean, it's like, okay, this, 
this week this guy's out kicked him by two kicks and then the next week this guy's out kicked the other by two so it's gone back and forth schwartz has had a little bit of a hip so hasn't kicked as well the last three or four days but from a competition that's why i say it's going to be a camp long competition it's going to go probably right to the middle of next week before we decide on who's going to be a starter and every day we do field goals we do two from the right two from the left i mean and we let each guy make every kick and let them compete every day uh, timetable, I think it's pretty much the same where they were talking about maybe at the beginning of um, October, uh, kind of like where he'd missed the first four games. Is that a week early or late at this point? I don't know, but I'm, I'm, I'm expecting him sometime around, right around that first week of October is when we're expecting him back. Don't believe him that any setbacks at this point, and I believe uh, AJ may be middle of October to late October. Uh, is what they're talking about with AJ. So Sterling could actually be ahead of him. Yes, Sterling, from my understanding, from what they've told me, Sterling should be back before AJ is. They, obviously, Sterling was injured before him, but, but AJ had a much more serious injury.